Let's make a game. In main menu version one, we introduced a basic state machine and how to control different game states, but it is not as easy for the code to run. So now we are going to make it more efficient using less code and less memory. Let's review version one, where we explained what a state machine is and how we can make one in Pico 8. Different parts of a game, like the intro, main menu, and the gameplay itself, are called game states. And we can build something that controls the game states, called a state machine. You should already know that a Pico 8 game has two main functions, underscore update and underscore draw. Update handles the game logic, and draw handles what is on the screen. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could have an update and a draw function for each state of our game? So imagine one set of update and draw for the main menu and another set for the actual game. Then we could simply change which one is active at certain points of the game. We're going to do the exact same thing, except we're going to get rid of the scene variable and constantly checking it which is inefficient and slow. We can skip all of that because of something special in the Lua programming language. Function names are actually just variables that hold code instead of a word or a number. Normally, to create a function, you have to write function, name it, parentheses, end it, and write some code inside. And now we actually have a variable named my function, and it is holding code that can be run as a function. With normal variables, we can copy the value from one variable to another variable like this. a equals 10, b equals a, print parentheses a plus b. And that works out to print 20. What happened was, Pika8 created a variable named a and set the value to 10. Then it created a second variable named b, and then it looked for a variable named a, found a's value, and then set a's value to b. Doing that did not erase the value from a, it copied it. Now, variables a and b both hold the number 10. So of course, Pico8 understood a plus b to mean 10 plus 10, and printed 20. That might seem way too basic for what you are here to learn, but now we are going to do the exact same thing, but with functions. Okay, we still have this function we created called myFunction, and you just saw how we used the built-in function print. Since print is a function, we can treat it like a variable that is holding code. And we can copy all the code inside print to our new function here, just like we copied a to b. My function equals print. Notice that there are no parentheses after the function names here. So they will be treated as variables simply holding data and not as functions running code. Now, if that worked, the value being held by the variable print will be copied into my variable named my function. Except it's not just a number this time, they are functions that hold code. And to check if that worked, let's print something to the screen using my function instead of print. My function, hello world. And run that. It worked. But now let's look back at this code again and look at where we created our own function. It doesn't have any code inside of it. And now we can see that all we really did here was create a variable named my function. And then down here, we are overwriting my function in order to copy print's code into it. So doesn't that mean creating an empty function this way is pointless? Well, let's delete it and see if it still works out. There you go. No errors. Everything still works just fine. That's because if the variable myFunction doesn't already exist, 
setting it to something will also create that variable at the same time. Okay, now what does all this mean for game states? Well, it's a pretty sweet shortcut to setting what code goes inside of what function names. Remember that Pico8 expects two main functions in order to run a game, underscore update and underscore draw. Normally, we have to create those functions like this, function, underscore update, parentheses, and end. But now we can see that that is really just creating a variable named underscore update. And we can more easily create a variable like this, underscore update equals. So let's do the same thing with underscore draw. Now we just need some code to copy into those variables that Pika8 will try to run as functions. So now let's create update and draw functions specifically for a main menu. Function update menu. Then check if button press X is detected, then we'll wanna start the game, but we'll get to that in a second. And then function draw menu don't forget to end it. And inside we will clear the screen, print, press X to start, around 30X and 60Y. Okay, now we have two more functions, update menu and draw menu, that we can treat as variables. And we can copy their code directly into the two main functions here. Underscore update equals update menu and underscore draw equals draw menu. All right, let's make sure this all works. There you go. We simply treated these two main functions as variables, set them to hold code from our other functions, and Pika8 is perfectly fine with that. All right, so now we have a main menu, and when you press X from the main menu, we want to start the game, which means we want to change the main functions to hold the code from our game functions. So if button press X, then underscore update equals update game and underscore draw equals draw game. Done, game states changed, except we don't actually have update game and draw game functions yet. So let's build those quickly. Function, update game and function, draw game, end. And just to prove to ourselves that it does change, let's draw something simple. How about clear the screen, then circ fill at 63x and 63y with a size of five pixels and color green, which is 11. All right, let's test that out. There's the main menu, pressing X, now, and there's our green circle, which is from the gameplay state. We are able to completely change the game states by directly setting the main update and draw functions to hold the code from our specific state functions. Awesome, and this is so much more efficient because we don't use version one's long if else if checks every tick of the game. When we wanna change the game state, we simply change the main underscore update and underscore draw functions to hold the code and run the code from one of our specific states, update and draw functions. So we hope this explains how we can make a more efficient state machine and a quick demo of it in action. But you're probably wondering, how do I build this into a game that I already made? So to answer that, our next video will completely demonstrate taking one of our bite-sized games and adding a main menu using this efficient state machine. We're happy to answer questions in the comments and by subscribing, you're telling us that you want us to make more videos. Thanks.